um, welcome back to the Windows Phone 7 tutorials for Mango. This is the fourth tutorial which is on isolated storage. So what we're actually going to be playing with is the isolated storage settings um, which will allow us to actually um, set some information into the settings. We can choose what it's called and what's going to be inside of it. So we're going to give it a name and the actual content that we want to be passing around. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can actually add, remove and actually use if statements to see if there's stuff inside the um, application settings. Uh, what this will mean is if the application is installed onto a mobile and you start adding stuff in the program, uh, it will remain on the user's phone. If they exit the application go back in, it'll still be there. But if they uninstall the application, it will remove all the information related to it and it, you know, if you reinstall it, it will um, start from fresh. So you'll, have to, you'll be re-adding it again. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're just going to go new and we're going to make a new project for Windows Phone. We're just going to call it Isolated Storage. We'll just go ahead and choose 7.1. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our main page and we're going to use a simple thing here. We're going to just put a text box uh, on the main page and then we're just going to put a button underneath that. And I'm just going to change the button's content to something like Continue. There we go. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to take someone's name or anything that they put into this box and carry it over to the new uh, to a new page inside the application uh, and how you actually gather the information, add it, remove it. So what we're going to do is just clear the text box like that. So we're going to now make a new page and just going to leave it as page one. I'm not going to change anything. And um, what you're going to do here is just add the tool of text block. I am just going to make it a little bit bigger um, and I'm going to go down to text alignment and set that to center just so that it's in the middle no matter what comes into the box. I'm just going to enlarge the font to something like 40, that's a nice large font. And then I'm going to remove um, what was actually here in there already. So there we go, now we have a blank text block. So the first thing we've got to do is go back to our main page and just right click anywhere and go view code. So this now opens up the coding for it. What we have to do for the isolated storage is we first have to add the using um, reference. So we're actually using system.io.isolatedStorage. And then we have to go down to our constructor where we actually um, set a um, new way of using the isolated storage settings application settings. So we're going to go private. And from there we're just going to type isolated storage and we're going to go settings and then we're going to call it app settings just like that equals and then we're just going to go isolated storage settings dot application settings and we're just going to close that off with a set of um, semicolon things so there we go um, there's our isolated storage set and we're pretty much ready to go so we're going to go back into the um, we're going to just copy this and we're going to put the exact same thing into page one into that code so if you just put it straight in without you putting the using reference in, you'll see that you end up with a red squiggly line, which is never a good thing. No one likes them. So what we're going to do is rather than actually manually adding the using, you can actually just click on it and this little box will appear. If you click on that, it will say using system IO isolated storage. Click that and it's added it in for you. It saved you a little bit of effort, but not a great deal. So what we're going to do now is back to our main page, we have our text box called text box 1 and our button called button 1. So we're going to double click the button to get the code up. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to cover ourselves straight away with the adding of um, app settings. So first of all, we want to make sure that the app settings doesn't already contain the file we're about to make. So we're going to do if open bracket app settings dot contains let me just open brackets here and we're just going to call it um, name. Um, so what this will do is it will then say when you click on the button it will check the app settings and see if it actually contains um, the, the file or file name. So if it contains it then what we want to do is we want to do app settings dot remove and then name and then we want to re-add it. But what we're going to do when we add the uh, the name is we're going to add name, and then we're just going to put a comma in here, and we've got to change. We've got to say what we want to actually be inside of this setting that we're adding, and we're going to make that text box one dot text. Close that, and there we go. It's added. But what we haven't done is if we were to run it just like this, 
um, we're, nothing would actually happen because what this is saying is if it does exist we want to remove and re-add it so what we need to do is just add an else statement on there which means if it doesn't contain it already then we're going to want to go ahead and app settings dot add and then we're just going to add it the exact same way name comma text box one dot text obviously there's no need to actually um, remove it because in the else it's saying that it doesn't already exist so there we go problem solved now what we're going to want to do uh, after we finish the if statement straight after the else but keeping inside the button click event here um, we're actually just going to want to do the navigation service so we're actually going to use um, the same method that we used last time to navigate from one page to another um, which was a navigation service dot navigate um, and then we're going to go ahead and just do new URI and we're going to go for slash page one because that is the same page again here we have made a new page called page one so it's page one dot XAML so want to close that and then URI kind dot relative and there we go that will now um, do the navigating side of things so that's all well and good we now have a page where we can open it up type some information into this text box and when we click the continue button it's actually gonna set the information in the text box and it's gonna set it to the new app setting that we made and it's gonna navigate us to page one so now we need to handle that when page one comes into action so on page one uh, in the initializing component, so this is when the uh, page is initially opened up and first actually used. So when you navigate to it, that will happen. But if you come back, say when we use the back button to go back to the main menu, the initialize component will not be called. So you need to realize that this is only when you first either navigate or enter a page. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a simple again if app settings contains name, then what we want to do is we just want to do a new string so we're just going to do string and we're going to do um, content we could have called this whatever we want to call it but I'm just going to call it content for now and we're going to do content equals app settings and we're going to use these square brackets this time with no dot and we're just going to declare the one that we want to take the information from um, and we're going to do that now the problem here you'll see is that it's saying that there's an error and it's saying that it cannot change an object to a string now this is because when app settings is in this state you're not actually saying you're not actually um, bringing the information in in a string format so what you need to do is you need to do dot to string which converts it and the squiggly line goes away and everyone feels better so now what we need to do is we want to make sure that our text block one that we made is actually going to display the text from our first page so we're going to go ahead and type text oh, we're going to type text block one dot text and we want to set the text equal to the new string so we're not going to do the app settings we're actually going to use the new thing we made called content so we use content and close it as you can see here if you highlight it it puts a little very light gray square over content here to say that we are now going to be using this string content and setting the content of text block one so that done we're just going to save that um, or we yeah yeah we'll just save that um, and we're just going to go build we don't really need to but I'm going to anyway and I'm just going to click start debugging okay so as you can see our new application is loaded we've got our text box that we made on the main page and we've got our button so what I'm just going to put in here is I'm just going to go ahead and type in student windows dev so I've just typed a name in here and I'm going to click the continue button now and as you can see, the text that I put into that text box has now come into the student window dev. And so it's going to take our text block over and our text has been set. We can go back and we just check it definitely is working by maybe adding something onto the end of it like an exclamation mark. Let's click continue. And as you can see, the text has once again updated itself with the exclamation mark. So this is just another tutorial to show you just how to use the app settings. If you want to go into a little bit more depth about it and you want to know more, then feel free to contact me, you can message me on YouTube, you can add my Skype, um, just contact me via email, totally down to you. Um, just let me know what you think. Um, remember to subscribe and uh, keep watching the videos guys.